Hey you guys, I'm Steven. I'm Giselle. And we're the Lover's Passport and today we're going to be telling you guys all about the best fall and winter spots to go to in California. So California is obviously very large and does take a long time to drive from south to north. So we're going to split this video up into three different sections starting with Southern California. Southern California is a great fall and winter destination area as a whole because the temperature is much more mild than it is during the summer. A lot of these places we're about to recommend would get into the 90s hundreds degrees Fahrenheit during the summer so fall and winter is the perfect time to visit these destinations. So there's four different areas that we would recommend in Southern California. The first one is going to be Joshua Tree National Park. I'm sure you guys have heard of this place. It's very well known. It's a great spot to go rock climbing. It also has some beautiful astrophotography and stargazing areas in the whole park. It's a desert so it's really cool to go see all the different trees out there, all the different Josh trees. And another cool part about it is that it's fantastic for beginner all the way to advanced rock climbing. So there's things from V0 all the way up to things in the V10 to V15 area. So if you guys are looking to start rock climbing or you just want somewhere to get out and practice, if you guys have been in the gym for a while, this is a perfect spot to do that. And if you're not comfortable doing any outdoor climbing by yourself, there are companies that will take you out there and teach you how to climb traditional or sport climb or even boulder so we'll link some options down in the description below for you we do always have our own equipment so that's why we love going there during the fall and winter and there's also a little secret area next to Joshua tree where you can do this really cool like ropes and ladders canyon hike so we'll link our Joshua tree video where we did that whole experience if you're interested in adding on an extra day to your Joshua tree part of your trip Next up, we would recommend Anza Borrego State Park. Now this area was such a surprise for us the first time we went. It is absolutely gorgeous, has tons of badlands and off-roading and hikes and slot canyons and stuff. So if you're really into that kind of scenery, you're gonna love checking out Anza Borrego. It's another really good spot for astrophotography and stargazing as well. The nice thing about this area is there's tons of free camping as well as some established campsites. And we really go into that in our specific Anza Borrego video. So we'll link that up here for you guys to watch, but definitely hit that area. Check out Fonts Point as long as you have four wheel drive or all wheel drive and the Slot Canyon's pretty cool over there too. We kept calling it mini Death Valley because it had a lot of Death, Death Valley vibes from the Badlands to the type of rock to the caves but it is definitely a little bit smaller than Death Valley. Which is why it's a state park. <laughs> which is what leads us to the next spot, which is Death Valley. It's the biggest national park in the whole US. With that, it comes with a lot of different diversity. There's sand dunes, there's salt flats, there's cool caves, there's slot canyons. There's all kinds of stuff that you guys can explore there, as well as it has the lowest point in the US, which is Badwater Basin. It gets down to negative 281 feet below the sea level. So Death Valley, there's tons and tons to do, as Stephen was saying. The nice thing about this area too, like Anza Borrego, is there's tons of free backcountry camping. And there's also established campsites here, but we really love the backcountry because then you get you know spots to yourself. It's not as hectic with a lot of people. So if you're looking for some more free camping options, Death Valley is another one to go. Make sure you bring your national parks pass though, because you do have to pay the entrance fee if you don't have a pass. Now there's two different ways to explore Death Valley. There's the main area where you do Badwater Basin, Dante's View, sand dunes, the, the Mesquite Flat sand dunes are crazy. But if you want a different kind of trip, make sure you get out to Eureka Sand Dunes. Yeah, and we have a whole other, we have videos on all of this stuff, so we'll link that one up here too. Those sand dunes are the tallest ones in California, so although the Mesquite Flat Sand Dunes are epic, and we definitely recommend going to those at sunrise rather than sunset, mainly because it's less busy. It's a couple hours out of the like main national park area to get to the Eureka Sand Dunes, but there's camping right there. It's totally worth the trek and it's way less busy. It'd take us about like an hour, hour 15 to climb to the top of the tallest one. So just prepare yourself for a workout if you're gonna do that too. <laughs> And last spot that we recommend checking out in Southern California is San Diego. Now the San Diego area as a whole is really cool, but the city is beautiful. You can make it out to Sunset Cliffs. They have a few different 
state parks nearby if you want to try and get up above the clouds for a cloud inversion. We did a kayaking and snorkeling tour with Everyday California, which we definitely recommend and we will link it down below. And so much fun if you hit there earlier in the fall you get to swim with the leopard sharks that are breeding there they're totally harmless but it's a really cool experience and we would definitely recommend checking that out as well as heading up to the tory pines glider port we saw a sunset up there absolutely stunning would recommend checking that area out for sunset next up is central california so we're going to start with pinnacles national park this area is totally underrated in our opinion. We haven't seen too many people mm -hmm. go there, talk about it, and it was very surprising when we went. It was, it kind of reminds us of Joshua Tree in terms of there's lots of pinnacles and it's a really good area for rock climbing, but it gets so hot if you don't go in the fall and winter. So definitely try to go during this time, if anything, spring. There's tons of stuff to do. They're known for their caves. Check out the caves, head up to Bear Gulch and check out the reservoir. We did, we must have done 17 miles of hiking in one day there because there, there's honestly so much to see. We'll link the full Pinnacles National Park video up here for the specific trailhead names, but just know it's definitely worth checking out if you're trying to hit all the national parks. Don't, don't count this one out. It's also really nice because you can see a ton of wildlife. The condors there were beautiful, especially if you can get up to the top of Pinnacles National Park. There's some beautiful condor viewing area. Next up, we'd recommend checking out Mammoth Lakes area. So this is a great area for snowboarding first off, and the snow is just top notch quality. And it's one of the only areas in, you know, California where there's a huge ski and snowboard resort. So definitely recommend checking out the slopes, but there's also tons of other things to do. You can check out Convict Lake in the morning. Sunrise there is very popular to photograph as well if you're into photography. And it's just a stunning little scenic loop trail. It's pretty short as I mm -hmm. remember, but definitely worth checking out as well as tons of hot springs. Just simply type in hot springs onto your Google Maps and it will tell you at least like five or six in the area. They do get very full very fast, so go earlier rather than later. Try to avoid peak times in the middle of the day. Sunrise is always a good time to go mm -hmm. and you can get that up, like epic alpine glow up on the mountains while you're in the hot springs. And also if you're visiting the hot springs, check out Mammoth Creek Geological Site. It's another really cool photography spot in the area. And last but not least for Central California, we said Yosemite. If you guys know our channel, we love Yosemite. <laughs> we go there at least two times a year, every year. So we have a whole, we must have four or five videos on Yosemite themselves. So we'll link them all in the description. But if you're going in fall and winter, if you're doing fall colors, perfect time to go. All the trees do turn in the valley. And then in winter, there's some awesome snowshoeing. We'd recommend snowshoeing up the four mile trail, um, doing the little scenic loop around the valley. A lot of the waterfall hikes, not really worth it in the winter because obviously they're either frozen or not really existent. So we'd recommend doing the waterfall hikes in the spring, but if you are going to Yosemite for the winter, definitely do the snowshoeing, try and catch the firefall. That's in February every year. If you're lucky, you can see it. And we, we got to see it on our anniversary last year. So plan in advance if you're gonna try and see the firefall in winter in Yosemite. And the last spot is Northern California. So number one on there, we would recommend going to Lake Tahoe. If you've ever been there during the spring or summer, it has this beautiful blue water. It's great for hopping in. It might be a little chilly but during the winter they also have some amazing snow just like at mammoth it is a huge mountain where you can go skiing and snowboarding at and it there is a ton of accommodations as well so there's a huge city there just like in mammoth so if you have a full family that you want to bring to lake tahoe during the winter or fall it make, can make for a great trip Next up, we have Redwoods National and State Parks. And this area, I would say, is pretty nice to visit year round, but in the fall and winter, you get that like moody vibes when you're visiting, some low hanging fog perhaps, and it's just nice weather in terms of temperature. Now you're gonna get some rain, so be prepared because we don't mind the rain, but it does mean less crowds. So mm -hmm. that's a nice 
time of year to visit because you're gonna have fewer people. Another thing that we loved about the Redwoods National Park is it made it so everything was evenly lit during the winter and fall. Cause usually they have some low hanging fog or they'll have some clouds. So it makes it nice and cool. So you're not hiking in the insane heat of that area during the summer, as well as you get to experience, like Giselle was saying, that really cool kind of PNW type of vibes with the low hanging fog and a lot of moodiness. So made for a really eerie area, but it was still beautiful in its own. And if you're in the Redwood area too, we have a whole itinerary that you can stack on there, like Bernie Falls and Mount Shasta area as well. So we'll link that video up here and in the description for you guys. And just to close out our top recommendations for California spots to adventure in the fall and winter, it is Mount Tam in the Bay Area. Mount Tam is short for Mount Tamalpais State Park in the Bay Area. And we always love going to this spot for these epic cloud inversions. And you start to see these around August. They call it Fogus for a reason. Um, with Carl the Fog coming in. And you can also, it's it's right next to Muir Woods National Monument. So you get two birds, one stone. You can go out to Muir Woods, hike during the day and then go see a sunset up at Mount Tam. If you are looking to photograph the fog, this is the spot to go for sure. And it's just a very pretty sunset spot year round, I would say. Anyways, those were our top recommendations for where to go in the fall. If you guys are planning on going there, make sure you check out the specific YouTube video for that area because we go much more into detail about what hikes to do, where our favorite spots were, and other tips. And if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. It helps our channel out a lot. And if there's any future itineraries or locations in California you guys want us to explore and review for you guys, let us know in the comments and we'll be sure to check them out. Thanks you guys for watching and we'll see you out there on the next adventure.